Hey everyone, welcome back to Ashka's world. So last time we managed to survive the long winter, the villagers pulled together and made it through. Even without proper clothing, it was tough, but we did it. As soon as winter ended, we jumped right into gathering materials to make some decent linen clothes. We also started stockpiling food and resources, getting ready for the next winter. But then the game hit us with a surprise, a major invasion coming in 30 days. So now we're not just preparing for winter, but also getting ready for a big battle. We've got to build barracks, set up a range and start training some villagers to fight. So stick around as we get everything ready. We've got a lot to do, and the survival of our village depends on it. Let's get to it. Alright, I've just added one of my villagers to the barracks to train in the arts of sword and shield. Soon, he'll be a master of melee combat. We've got a couple of other options for training too. We can turn villagers into bruisers, which focuses on two-handed combat, or soldiers, who specialize in one-handed combat without shields. Unfortunately, there isn't an option for dual wielding yet, but maybe that's something that will be added in the future. Each military building allows us to add up to three villagers. One trained villager is good, but having three is perfect. Every villager can perform a soldier's duty, and will automatically defend our village from invaders. There is a slight delay in a villager's reaction to the invasion unless they are specifically posted, but no need to worry. After we set up villagers to train, we can also establish a patrol point. When soldiers are on active duty and we have multiple military buildings, villagers can patrol the perimeter. This patrol helps in keeping the village secure and provides an early warning system for any incoming threats. It's all about being prepared and making sure every corner of our village is protected. Time to build an archery range. Just like the barracks, we can assign up to three villagers to train here. This will allow us to post them on the guard towers to defend the perimeter from above. The range is currently limited to only one military class, a ranger. Maybe more will be added down the road. Rangers use bows and arrows, and training here, similar to the barracks, increases the villager's appropriate skill. When a villager is summoned by the Utune blood call, they automatically become a builder, no matter what skills they possess. But since my villagers are currently lounging in their cottages, regaining their strength for a new day, I'll quickly prepare the ground for the archery range. It's like a Viking version of grinding XP, no rest for the dedicated. I recommend building a sled early on, as it will allow you to transport three times as many resources at once, in addition to your own inventory. While it may not be as fast as running without it, the benefit is huge, especially in the long run. Make sure to build a woodcutter's pit first, and then as you summon more villagers, work towards building a stonecutter's pit and a gatherer's pit, upgrading all three to their more advanced versions, the huts. Each building will allow you to assign up to two villagers to it, so start planning early on what you need the most. 
You can either start small by assigning one villager to each building, or you can assign two villagers to one building to quickly gather necessary resources before switching to the next building. Huts will store more resources, and the most advanced versions, houses, will significantly increase storage capacity and allow you to hire a third villager to work there. Think of it as leveling up your resource management, maximizing efficiency and storage to ensure your village thrives. Along with buildings, don't forget to place markers in the surrounding woods, overlapping their designated areas. This is crucial because you will quickly run out of gatherable resources around your main base. Strategic placement of these markers will ensure a steady flow of resources from the outskirts of your village. Make sure to sleep in a bed to gain Odin's Might Blessing, which will double your stamina for a limited time. You'll see a progress indicator in the middle of the screen that lets you know when it's okay to get up. Unlike your villagers, you don't need to sleep all night. If villagers don't sleep enough, it will affect their sleep anxiety. You can monitor their stats regularly to notice this. As the day progresses towards evening, their sleep anxiety will increase. Give them enough time to sleep, don't overwork them, and make sure they have enough food and water. This will ensure your village prospers. The robust customization system allows you to manage their sleep, work, and leisure schedules. Later on, you can build a wooden altar, which can gather up to three villagers and boost their morale. Being a warrior or a ranger and having proper housing will boost their morale even more. The time of the major invasion is steadily approaching as indicated by the counter with the crossed red swords in the top right of my game screen. While I still have some time left, I shouldn't relax since the days in Oshka pass pretty quickly. I still need to finish my archer's range and start training rangers as soon as possible. So, while my villagers are busy with other tasks, I help with what I can to prepare for the invasion in time. Villagers differ in their stats, abilities, and traits, so it's important to assign the appropriate villagers to specific military duties. Strength allows a villager to become a better melee warrior, while agility makes for a better ranger. This may not be too important in the early game, where a trained weapon skill can give a villager the upper hand against zombies or wolfars. However, in the late game, it becomes more beneficial to find villagers with appropriate stats, strength for melee, and agility for ranged weapons. After finishing my archery range, I'm ready to assign villagers for military duty as rangers. Fortunately, a couple of my villagers already have some points in ranged weapon skills, so this should give them a bonus in aiming and dealing better damage. With regular training at the range, their skills will steadily grow, making them more proficient with their ranged weapons. It's also essential to work on improving available equipment and weapon schematics in your crafter shop. Having better weapons and arrows will significantly increase the damage that rangers can deal. While they can still inflict some damage with flimsy weapons, improved ones will make them far superior on the battlefield. As you and your village improve, you will start attracting more powerful enemies, so it's good to be prepared. Continuously upgrading, training, and gearing up is key. Keep an eye on the latest schematics and make sure your crafters are always busy producing the best gear possible. The stronger your rangers, the better your chances against the looming threats. Remember, every bit of progress counts, and seeing your villagers evolve into elite warriors ready to defend your village is incredibly rewarding.
I'm summoning another villager to strengthen my village population, and I have two choices. Elia seems to be the better option this time. She has a boost to her health pool, which will make her more effective in protecting the village if the need arises. Although she will consume more food, at this point, that's not an issue. The extra health she brings to the table will be invaluable for our defense. To make the most of my time, I've started working on my warehouse to store all the excess resources lying around in the surrounding area and nearby woods. Even though they aren't as perishable as food, some organic resources will deteriorate over time. By storing them in a warehouse upgraded with a roof, these resources will have a much longer lifespan. This means I won't need to waste my villagers' efforts on redundant tasks, which is especially crucial as my village prepares for an invasion. Let's not forget that summer is also coming to an end, and the intermediate seasons of fall and spring aren't as long as winter and summer. Fortunately, I managed to get my clothing crafters going earlier, so all of my villagers will be ready to face another winter. This time, they won't have to shine their naked butts in the cold like last winter. They'll be appropriately covered, comfortable, and have high morale, especially if the invasion happens to coincide with the beginning of the coming winter. The healing place is crucial for keeping my villagers in top shape. Injuries can build up, and regular sleep won't cut it. At the healing place, health regenerates much faster, and with a villager assigned to assist, the healing is almost instant. This ensures my villagers are always ready for the next challenge. The Hunter's Hut is another valuable building in Ashka. It may not be as productive in the winter as in warmer seasons, but with three hunters, you usually won't need any other food sources. Plus, it helps raise their ranged skills, which can be useful if they become rangers later. Hunters bring back meat, leather scraps, for clothing, and bones, useful for medium-tier weapons and arrows. As the blood moon rises, you can expect attacks from various types of skeletons and zombies. While zombies are weaker, skeletons may present a challenge to an unprepared village. However, once you upgrade your clubs, dealing with them becomes much easier. As you can see, my villagers woke up and attacked the clunky invaders. With better equipment, they now have higher health pools and defense ratings, so skeletons are no longer a threat.
It's not the same for bears however, as you can see, we just got a warning that one will be attacking shortly. In Ashka, bears are powerful adversaries, mini bosses, you have to be very careful even with medium tier equipment to avoid being shredded to pieces by these mighty claws. Bears have a considerably larger health pool and may end up killing you if you're not careful. It will take a coordinated strategy and the help of your trained villagers to defeat a single bear. Thanks to my trained villagers, we didn't have much of an issue, except that I wasn't careful and got my health down to a very low level. I could have just danced around and let my soldiers take care of the bear, but where's the fun in that, right? Bears drop a considerable amount of meat, bones and leather scraps, making them a welcome target in my village. I almost wish they visited more often. Time to start building the first line of village defenses. I'm setting up a guard post first. It will be the central point where I'll station one of the rangers. The other two will be posted on the guard towers during the main invasion. This strategic positioning will ensure that we have a strong, coordinated defense ready to tackle any threats that come our way. Second comes the hedge wall, which will serve as an actual defense perimeter that the invaders will have to deal with first, before they can reach my villagers and buildings. The hedge wall is a middle tier defense, but it will be more than enough at this point in the game. My rangers are improving every day, as are my warriors. I've removed them from all additional tasks, and instructed them to focus solely on training their weapon skills. With the days before the invasion ticking away, this has become the top priority above all else. As I build the wall, I'm going to fast forward the process, so you don't have get bored with repetitive tasks. To help with that, I've assigned a few additional villagers to the building duty, so the wall building should go pretty smooth.
The last thing to do is upgrade the guard towers and give them a roof, so the rangers don't get soaked by the rain and suffer a hit to their morale. While I was upgrading the towers, giant rabbits tried to find a way into our little hamlet. Luckily, one of them was slow enough for a previously posted ranger to pick off from the tower. Good job! I need to keep an eye on that one and give him extra food rations or something. Winter has finally arrived in full force, with blizzards and rapidly dropping temperatures. I have just one day left before the major invasion begins. I've timed my preparations well, almost cutting it close, but our village is fully protected. Soldiers are somewhat trained and ready for battle. I've upgraded the guard towers and my rangers are prepared to jump into action at my first command. It's shortly after midnight, and the temperature has dropped below 20 degrees Celsius. The invasion tracker is warning me that an invasion is imminent. This is both exciting and frightening. What will the major invasion consist of? Can it really be that bad, considering I am only about 55 days into Ashka's world? Will it be much worse than the regular incursions the game has thrown at me so far, which haven't been too difficult, even the bear? Will there be multiple bears? When you receive the first message about the invasion, you get notified that a portal has opened somewhere nearby. So, about a week or so ago of in-in-game time, while collecting resources, I discovered where the portal was. I couldn't do much since you can't tell your villagers to guard near that spot. Otherwise, you could build guard towers around the portal, create a bottleneck, and dispose of the enemy's Sparta style. But alas, unless you rush there and build an outpost around that place within 30 days of in-game time, you have to prepare in your own village. So, I'm doing last-minute preparations, making sure the rangers are assigned to the guard towers and the guard post. The invasion is finally here, and so is the winter. In the morning, or shortly after, my village will be tested to see if we have done enough to survive. I am optimistic. It should be okay, unless the hedge walls give in too soon and we get overwhelmed by too many enemies. But let's see what happens. To calm myself down rather than just kill time, I decided to use the range to hone my own ranged skill. In the hustle of preparations, I completely forgot about my own abilities. The trial with the bear didn't leave me too optimistic about tanking powerful enemies on my own, even though I'm equipped with the same linen armor as my villagers. At this point, my soldiers can definitely do a much better job. So the best use I can think of for myself is to provide them with ranged support.
As day broke over our snowy village, the battle came to an end. We stood victorious. Our warriors fought bravely, their valor shining through every clash of steel. Though some fell in the heat of battle, their sacrifice ensured our village's survival. Our walls held strong for the most part, and even though there were breaches here and there, our village proudly stands tall. Thank you for watching our video, and we hope to see you again soon.